Praise the Lord. Deep Alive Bible Church, praise the Lord. I'm so happy you are here today. And I always like to see you. I wish I could see you one by one. Just a shake of hands. And that will do something good in my spirit, in my heart. Don't mind, I've got it already. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the joy of the Lord. Thank you for the privilege of serving you. And I'm praying that none of your people will serve in vain in Jesus' name. You have been speaking to us about the rapture. And you are eager that every one of us should be ready. And I pray that every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, everyone here today, you make every one of us ready in Jesus' name. Bless your people, Lord, and use us to help other people to be ready for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're reading from verse 51. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In verse 52, it says, In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. As you look at those verses of Scripture, it's talking about something that was a mystery at the time the apostle gave this word. He's talking about something that will be a mystery to the majority of the people in the world. Millions and billions of people on earth, when this event eventually takes place, will be surprised. There are many people living on your street. Many people living in your community, many people living in our town here, in our city here, living in Nigeria here, who have never heard the word rapture. Because you've heard it so many times, it may surprise you. There are many people walking on your street, walking around you, that have never heard there's anything called the rapture, when Christ will come. And the dead in Christ shall be raised up incorruptible. And then believers that are still alive, all of a sudden, what we know is that the force of gravity keeps everyone down, pinched to the earth. But then, mystery of all mysteries, the force of gravity will be suspended for everyone that is in Christ. All the other people on earth, of course, who do not know the Lord, and they're not expecting anything like this will take place suddenly. The force of gravity will lose its hold on you. That's why the apostles said, I show you a mystery. It's going to be a mystery for science. It's going to be a, a mystery for people who are philosophical. It's going to be a mystery for educated people all over the earth because they never can tell. They never will know that there will be somebody around them called a believer, a saint of God that all of a sudden will be caught up. You said, but I thought Enoch already experienced that. How many of our people in our country knows about Enoch? You say, I think people should know that Elijah experienced the rapture. 
How many churchgoers know about the rapture, the catching away of Elijah? I thought some people will know that while Jesus was talking to them, all of a sudden he was lifted up and then they saw him going to heaven. That's rapture. I thought the people will know. How many people do you think know about that? For the majority of people, they will never tell. And then for the Corinthians, Paul the Apostle said, I have a lot of things to tell you, but this is a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. Look at that verse 51. It says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die. Look at that word, all. Not everybody will die. What happened to Enoch before the flood? What happened to Elijah? And what happened to the Lord Jesus Christ? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all, look at that word again, all. We shall all be changed. And then he said, it's not going to be a gradual thing. Something happening slowly. And then we're able to say, you know, I'm going like Elijah. Like, do you know the Lord is going to take your master away from your head today? And then they went to another city. Do you know the Lord is going to take your master away from your head today? And then they cross over Jordan, ask what I will do. That one is gradually, uh, gradually, gradually being informed. This one, in a moment of time, in the twinkling of an eye, before you blink your eye, we are gone. I am, I am gone at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and then we how many people are you there and we shall be changed that's what we are talking about partakers of the blessed hope of the rapture partakers of the blessed hope of the rapture three things we're looking at number one the prophecy of the saints rapture with the godly church understand the church that is going to be raptured is the godly church the godly church and there is the prophecy that all saints saved people godly people righteous people devoted people unto the Lord the prophecy of the saints rapture with the godly church number two our preparation you will be ready you will prepare our preparation for the saints rapture with the governed church with the governed church there's the godly church there's a government church. The government church is the church that has Christ as the head. And Christ, the head of the church, is giving instruction to the whole body, to the church, and is giving instruction to the members and the ministers in the church. They are not, you know, people that are there ungovernable. They are not people who are, who are who say they are church, uncontrollable they are not a particular assembly of people they are not directed by heaven they are controlled by the Savior they are controlled by the scriptures they are controlled by the Spirit of God that governs church accepting the Lord as the head of the church and living and moving according to the directives of the head of the church that's the church that will be raptured our preparation for the saints rapture with the government church point number three the purpose of the saints rapture with the glorious church the church that will be raptured will be a glorious church a church that is washed white a church that is beautified, a church that is gracious, a church that is glorifying the Lord, a church that is glorious, beautiful in the sight of the Lord. That is the church that will be raptured. And there is a purpose for the saints' rapture with the glorious church. We're coming to point number one now. The prophecy 
of the saints rapture with the godly church let's look at three things here number one the unsearchable prophecy unsearchable prophecy number two the unshakable promise and number three the unstoppable performance number one is the unsearchable prophecy of the saints rapture we're coming back to that first corinthians again chapter 15 and i'm reading from verse 51 it says behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. It's talking about the whole of the church, the body of Christ, and it says all. It says we shall not all sleep. It's telling us something, you see, when we come to church, we're the visible church, we're the church that, you know, we can count, one, two, three, four, and 30 people attended church uh, that morning, and it says, all of us, we're not going to sleep. We're not going to die. There are some of us in the church that the rapture will meet up with you and you will meet up with the church. And then it says, we shall all be changed. All those people, young and old men and women, as the power of God comes upon them and transforms them to be translated to the Lord, then they will be changed. There will be something invisible that will happen and you'll just find you are no more here, you are over there. I pray it will happen to you in Jesus' name. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, reading from verse 14. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we're looking at verse 14. It tells us, it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. This is the work of God. This is the performance of God. This is what God himself is going to do. Even them, even so them also which live in Jesus will God bring with him. It's talking about the resurrection of those who have died in Christ. That's, those are the first set of people. They wake up, their spirit, their soul will join their body and up they'll be going. And then it says in verse 15, it tells us in verse 15, For this was say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we, look at that, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that's what prevention original means shall not precede them shall not come before them shall not hinder them that are asleep and then in verse 16 in verse 16 for the lord himself shall descend from heaven the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first now in verse 17 it says then that word then means after the dead in christ after the rise of then we which are alive and remain we which are alive and remain towards there we are alive alive spiritually alive in the experience of the grace of god alive in our salvation alive in our link and connection with the lord and then it says we which are alive and remain two things not either or but both and which means you are alive and you also remain there are some people that take backsliding like a game they are in today before you know them again they are out there are people that take going and coming being inside and outside 
they take that like, uh, you know, a toy that you are playing with. And they take their Christian experience and their Christian life with levity and with the loose hand, in, out, in, out. But here it tells us that the people that will experience the rapture, that the people, they are alive in Christ and they remain. If ye continue in my word, you abide. If ye continue in my word, you remain then you will be my disciple indeed that the people that abide in the lord all the time it says in that verse 17 it says then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord that's the prophecy the lord is coming I say the Lord is coming. I pray you'll be ready in Jesus' name. Number two is the unshakable promise. You see, the promise the Lord is giving us is unshakable. Nothing can change it and nothing can shake it. The unshakable promise of the saints' rapture. Unshakable promise of the saints' rapture. And let's look at First John chapter 3 from verse 1. In First John chapter 3, we're looking at it from verse 1. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. Then it says, But this we know, but we know when it shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Understand what he's saying there? He says, when he shall appear, he is coming. And then when he appears, he wants to take us away. It says, we shall be like him even as he is because we shall see him as he is. What that means is, now as a believer, we are to walk in the steps of Christ. Spiritually, we are to be like him. In meekness, we are to be like him. In lowliness, we are to be like him. In our character, in our behavior, we are like him now because we are born again, we are sanctified. He has given us the divine nature and he has given us the virtue of the Christian life. We are like him. That's spiritually. But when he appears, it will change our mortal body. And then our body will be like his body. Because after he rose from the dead and the disciples were behind closed doors without the doors being opened, he just appeared to them and he said, Peace be unto you. On the day of resurrection, he rose from the dead and he said, Mary, don't touch me yet. I've not been to the Father. And that same day, that same morning, he went to the Father. By the evening, he came back. Because once he sings and once he says, I want to go to heaven, I want to reach there physically, he's there. And once in heaven and he wants to come to us here, he's here. We shall be like him, we'll be transported like that without any hindrance at all. It will happen to you. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, Every man that has this hope in him, every brother, every sister, every child of God, every member of the godly church, everyone that has tasted the grace of God, that has this hope in him, that's the hope of rapture. That's the hope of seeing the Lord when he appears. Everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. 
he purifies himself even as he is pure i pray you'll be there in jesus name look at matthew chapter 24 and we're reading from verse 35 matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 35 it says heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away have you have you ever thought about it heaven and earth shall pass away many people that's another mystery people think uh, the sky is going to be there forever all the stars and all the and the moon and the sun is going to be there they are going to be there forever but jesus said heaven and earth he didn't say may pass away he said heaven and earth shall pass away all the things the people are collecting together they are gathering together they dig from the earth the gold and the silver and the bronze and all the metals and everything and then they build something and they say look at what i've got all that will vanish away because there'll be a fire that will come the word of god tells us that the first world the first earth was submerged with a flood with water but this world at present is being prepared for fire it will pass away then it says in verse in that verse 35 but my words shall not pass away he spoke about the rapture he said in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again that's the rapture and receive you unto myself that's what happens at the time of the rapture he says my words the promise i gave that i will come at the time of the rapture my word shall not pass away then look at verse 36 jesus said but of that day an hour knoweth no man no not the angels of heaven but my father only you can tell paul the apostle is being to the third heaven is come back and he and he knew the mysteries but he didn't know the day or the hour when the lord will come that's why he said we who are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds he didn't know because no man peter john paul any of the apostles and any of the people that pronounce themselves today proclaim themselves today as prophets whoever they are nobody knows any writer of any book that is writing and they are saying that god told them it's going to be years such and such and months such and such and days such and such that the lord will come back they are deceivers but of that day and hour knoweth no man no not the angels of heaven but my father only verse 37 then it says but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In verse 38, it says, But as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And then he says in verse 39, it says, And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Look at this. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It will come suddenly. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. It will come when many people are not expecting, unexpectedly. So shall the coming of the son of man be i pray you will be ready
In verse 42, in verse 42, it says, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when your Lord doth come. Look at verse 44. In verse 44, therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as she think not the Son of Man cometh. We have seen the unshakable promise as well as the unsearchable prophecy. Now we're looking at the third thing there, the unstoppable performance of the saints' rapture. Unstoppable. Satan cannot stop this one. The world cannot stop this. Science cannot stop this. Philosophy cannot stop this. Society, the people of the world cannot stop this. Other religions cannot stop this. The rapture will happen. I said the rapture will happen. Unbelief, the unbelief of the world of religious people cannot stop this one. Because this is what heaven has decided, God has decided, Christ has decided. It's on the timetable of God. And what God will do, he will do. Nobody will stop it. And nobody will stop you either. In Jesus' name. And look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, it tells us, For our conversation is in heaven. There are people, their conversation is on earth. Their mind is on earth. Their plan is for the earth. Their disposition is for the earth. Their aspiration is for the earth. And their goal is getting more of the dust of the earth. But the people who are getting ready for the rapture, like Enoch, like Elijah, like the Paul, the apostle, getting ready, knowing that it could happen at his own time, our conversation our focus, our desire, our expectation, our manner of life, and everything we intend to do, everything we plan, what is uppermost in our project that we're pursuing every day, our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, in verse 21, who shall change our vile body. That's the rapture. He will change our corruptible body. He will change our body that is weighed down, that is dragged down, that is being pulled down by the force of gravity. The Lord himself, as he comes from heaven, he will change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. You see that? That's the rapture. He will refashion us. He will remodel us. He will put something in us that will make us look like his glorious body. Not his body when he was on earth. When he was on earth, he had a body that could be thirsty. And he, he told that woman at the well, give me water. That's the earthly body. And then the people knew that was hungry and the disciples went to buy bread and they were pleading with him, each master. And he said, I've got food to eat that you know not. Has anybody come to give him food to eat? That's the earthly body. But now the glorious body. It says that our body now may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That's the body he took to heaven and the force of gravity could not bring him down, you will be like that. I said you'll be like that. I can just imagine us going up and I look that way and I say that brother so and so and I look that way and I say that sister so and so, we shall all take part in Jesus' name. 
according to his working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself able to subdue all things unto himself ezekiel chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 25 ezekiel chapter 12 reading from verse 25 it says for i am the lord i will speak and the word that i shall speak shall come to pass any amen from the church the word that I shall speak shall come to pass and it shall be no more postponed, delayed or prolonged. Look at this, look at this. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, says the Lord. You know, there are people who think that they can delay whatever God wants to do. They say if they don't pay attention to God, they say if they don't obey God, they say if they remain rebellious against the Lord, then God will be forced to delay the rapture. Hold on. He said the flood was coming. And Noah declared the flood was coming. But you know what? The people did not listen. That rebellion of the people did not change the time of the flood. It happened. The angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah. And the angels announced that fire will come and burn up Sodom and Gomorrah. The people of Sodom thought it was an idle tale. They thought it was all deception. And they were still continuing in their violence. That rebellion, that continuation in their violence did not stop what God wanted to do. The Lord is saying, I'm speaking the word in your own days that the rapture is going to take place. And he says, in your days, I will do this, O rebellious house. I will say the word and will perform it, says the Lord God is the unstoppable performance of the saints rapture. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, therefore, Say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more. Did he say the dead shall rise? It will happen. Did he say Christ will come? It will happen. Did he say the rapture is going to take place? It will happen. Because there shall none of my words be prolonged any more. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, says the Lord God. It will happen. And when it happens, you'll be a partaker in Jesus' name. What do we do? How do we get prepared so that you will not miss that day? Point number two now, our preparation for the saints' rapture with the government church. The government church. What does that mean? I told you already, the church that accepts that Christ is the head. Not only in word, but in reality. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 23. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. You understand that? The head is the savior of the body. The head gives instruction to the uh, hand when you are thirsty that you should go for a glass of water. 
the head gives that instruction and the hand takes that glass of water and drinks and then you are hungry the head gives instruction to the hands and to the feet walk move get up and go to the place where the food is and the legs and the feet and the hands you obey that and you feed yourself the head is the savior of the body you're walking and you see a vehicle coming and the head gives instruction stop don't move again and you obey the instruction of the head the head is the savior of the body prevents danger and prevents death christ is the head of the church and christ gives instruction to all the members of the body of the church and preserves the church and prevents the church from danger and from spiritual death and from degradation and defilement and pollution christ is the head of the church and christ is the savior of the body and as the body is governed by christ it's that government of christ in the church on the church that preserves the church for the time of his coming look at verse 24 in verse 24 therefore as the church is subject unto christ so let wives be to their own husbands in everything the church and the membership of the church must be subject to christ in everything that's how we say the church is a governed church a governable church a church that is under the directives and the control and the doctrine of christ now what preparation do we make as members of the government church to be ready for the time of the rapture number one abiding faith with purity of heart abiding faith with purity of heart number two abounding love from a purified heart abounding love from a purified heart number three assuring hope of a patient persevering heart faith love and hope number one is abiding faith with purity of heart we're looking at hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 by faith enoch was translated that he should not see death and he was not found because god had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Before his translation, before his rapture, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6, it says, But without faith, it's impossible to please God. And the people who are going to go in the rapture will be the people that live by faith to please God. You have faith, you get salvation. You have faith, you get sanctified. You have grace, you get the grace of God. You have grace, you have the righteousness by faith. You have faith, you walk by faith. And it is that faith that encompasses your life. It is that faith that saturates your life. It is that faith that moderates your life. It is that faith that is uh, the foundation of everything you do in your life. That's what gets you ready for the rapture. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We're looking at Acts chapter 15, verse 9. Acts 
chapter 15 verse 9 and put no difference between us and them what's that he put no difference between us apostles this peter talking and them the gentiles those who just came into the kingdom and he put no difference between the first century believers and the last century believers who are going to be there at the time of the coming of christ the same salvation that those early people had is the same salvation that we have today he put no difference the same sanctification that those early believers had and they had the holiness without which no man shall save the lord the same kind of sanctification we have today the same commitment the same consecration the same absolute surrender unto the lord giving the lord all their heart the same commitment surrender those early believers had the same we have today and he put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith purifying their hearts by faith that's the great work of faith in everyone's life what's the result of that galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 it says i am crucified with christ no difference between them and us nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god i live by the faith of the son of god i live by the faith of the son of god capital s there is talking about the same faith that jesus christ had what kind of faith is that jesus believed that everything his heavenly father said is true and is abiding and nothing can contradict it and scripture cannot be broken we live by the same faith of the son of god that jesus christ had the same faith that believes that the totality of the word of god is unbreakable is given by god and because of that it's infallible we're living by the faith of the son of god that the father who is uh, who sent me is always with me that's the faith of the son of god that you believe uh, anywhere you are everywhere you find yourself the lord who has sent you to this world is with you and it's a faithful god anything that happened anything that is happening the lord has allowed that and all things work together for good to them who are the called of god to them who love the lord and then everything happens according to his divine purpose in your life that's why now if you are getting ready for the rapture that's the kind of faith that must abide in you i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me in particular it's wonderful to say he loves us and there are people who say that he loves us and they're not sure that he loves them individually they're asking the question but why they're asking the question but how they're asking the question why me they're asking the question they doubt the love of god the people who are getting ready for the rapture they are the people that believe that god loves me and gave himself for me whether other people believe it or not you know that christ gave himself for you and i pray that faith will abide in our hearts until the end in jesus name number two is the abounding love 
from a purified heart abound in inner love a kind of love that is not um, a kind of small and limited and confined you know there are people that say i love but you know you can't say the love there are a lot of pills over that love because of the things happening to me you have to peel off all those layers of the onion because the love is a small seed inside that onion and you have to peel it and while you're peeling all those things of the onion is affecting irritating your eyes and you are crying but keep on peeling you will see that i have love and the love is a small dot inside those layers of onion not that kind of love the love that is excited exuberant and the love that is full and the love that is abounding in her and the love that is flowing you love the Lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and you love your brother you love your sister as Christ has loved you and you love your neighbor as yourself that's the kind of love you love and there's no complaint in love there's no murmuring in love there is no fear in love there is nothing negative in love they just love somebody does something you know, that's a mistake you didn't mean to do that it's wiser than that you are able to put a better construction a good construction on whatever anybody does you are not negative and you are not criticizing and you're not murmuring you have love a kind of love that will not nothing will push you back you know he said that about me he's done that to me and because of that my love is shy and my love has gone inside uh, the room and my love is so shy will not come out because of what he said about me your love is abounding and everybody can see that love and I pray that love is not there yet that love will penetrate every heart in Jesus name Give me a church deep and life. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. And we're looking at verse 22. First Peter chapter 1. We're looking at verse 22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love on hypocritical love, on pretending love, on to unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart. Tell me the final word there, fervently. That will be your love in Jesus' name. Running over, running over, your love will run over reaching everywhere and touching everywhere and turning darkness to light your love will turn darkness in every life will turn that to a light in jesus name your love will lift up somebody will encourage somebody will make somebody move forward make, will make somebody wanting to labor and they will live excited life and profitable life purposeful life through your love in Jesus name that's the kind of love that we're talking about that the Lord is talking about you wake up in the day and you live in the day you've done this you've done this you've done that I've not expressed love to anybody today I've not shared love with anybody today I've not imparted love to anybody today I've not encouraged anybody today I've not lifted up somebody today I have not given money to anybody today I've not fed anybody today I've not given a cup of cold water to somebody today I'm looking for somebody I must be a blessing to somebody today and you are active about that and you are proactive in every situation that's the kind of love the lord is expecting that we will have this abounding love you will have it in jesus name 
we come to number three there and number three is the assuring hope of a patient persevering heart a assuring hope of a patient persevering heart we're looking at titus chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 13 titus chapter 2 we're reading from verse 13 looking for that blessed hope looking for that blessed hope you see there are people they come to church and whatever they hear in the church they drop on the seat while they are living and they go out and after the service their life is exactly like they were living before they came to the service the same hopelessness the same helplessness the same despair, the same despondency, and the same complaint, and the same sorrow, and the same kind of degradation, degenerate behavior, they still go to, pro uh, to process and to live after the service. Everything they heard about the rapture, about the prophecy, about the proclamation about the promise of the rapture and about the sure performance of the rapture they forget all about that they drop that in the church they are not looking for that blessed hope but you see the people who are going to be raptured because they are rapturable they are people that are looking they are looking for that blessed hope they still have that subject in their heart, in their mind, and it influences all their action. It influences everything they say, everything they do, because they say, he may come today. Glad day, glad day. I, I may see my Lord today. Glad day, glad day. And then because of that, because of what they're looking at and what they're looking for, everything in their lives is with the bright hope. I pray you'll be like that. I said, I pray you'll be like that. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the rapture right there. And then it says in verse 14, in verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, they're not zealous of bad works. They're not zealous of evil works. They're not zealous of destructive works. They're not zealous of scattering works. They're zealous of good works. What good can I do today? What good will I be doing when Christ shall come? And what do I want him to see in my hand? Where do I want him to meet me when he comes? And they're zealously, they're passionately, they're positively, they're practically looking for opportunity to do good works. They'll be ready. You will be ready in Jesus' name. I said you will be ready in Jesus name look at that first John again first John chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 1 it says in first John chapter 3 verse 1 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us what manner of love the father has bestowed upon you the father God in heaven he has all those myriads, uncountable number of angels in heaven. And he says all the same, although I'm in the fellowship, I'm in the midst of the elders, I'm in the midst of the angels, I'm in the midst of those living creatures, and they are crying holy, holy, holy unto God Almighty day and night, and they rest not day nor night, and they are worshipping me. I still want so and so. I still want such and such to come and be with me 
what great love, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Look at verse 2 once again. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God? When are you going to be sons of God? Those who delay, saying, I will repent, but not yet. I don't want to do that now. I'm still thinking about this and about this and about that. I will come, I will come. I will give myself to the Lord. I'm going to be surprised. I'll be a son of God. I'll be a daughter of God. I will run faster than all those people who are there. But not now, not now. I'm still considering this and waiting for this and waiting for this and waiting for that. Before you are ready, God is not going to work according to your timetable. I'll get saved later. I'll be restored later. I'll be sanctified later. I'm bitter now. I can't forgive that person. I have to revenge. I have to retaliate. When I finish what I want to do with them, when I deal with them, after dealing with them, then when I cool down and when my mind is now settled, I will come, I will be a child of God, a son, a daughter of God. You think God is going to abandon his own timetable and delay the rapture for you and walk according to your timetable? What do you think? So and so says it's not ready yet. Such and such said it's not ready yet. A thousand people, they have different timetables and they're walking according to their timetable. How many timetables will God walk with? He walks with only one timetable, and that is the timetable of heaven. He is coming. And at the appointed time, Christ will come. You tear away your own timetable. I tear off my own timetable. Throw that in the dustbin. Better still throw that into the fire. And then I say, Lord, I'm looking, I'm waiting only for the timetable of God. He says, now are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him. Somebody there, I shall be like him. Somebody there, I will be like him. For I will see him as he is. You'll be ready in Jesus' name. Nothing will take your name out of the people that are ready waiting for the Lord in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now, and that is the purpose of the saints' rapture of the glorious church. Understand? Godly church, government church, glorious church. You see, there are many kinds of churches, and there are nominal churches. There are even political churches. There are earthly churches. There are historic churches. There are liturgical churches. There are other kinds of churches. They don't even believe the Bible, but they are church. But the Lord is not coming for all the general churches that are there. He's coming for the glorious church. Look at it, Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, I'm looking at verse 25. It says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, talking about the kind of church is coming for husbands. Love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. In verse 26, it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. With the washing of water by the word. Uh, you, you understand? The word of God acts like water. 
And every time you come, it has to scrub you and cleanse you and wash you. There are people that don't understand that when they come to a glorious church and when they come to a God-honoring church, a God-glorifying church, a Bible-believing church, they say, but I don't understand. Why is it that every time we come, and they will speak the word, and the word will scrub me, and the word will point out something, and the, and the word will point out a stain, a spot to be cleansed away, because that's the ministry of the word, is to give us the washing of water by the word. What's the purpose for that? Look at verse 27. In verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. That's the kind of church that will be presented to the Lord at the time of the rapture. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish. That's the rapturable church. And what's the purpose? Why will Christ come at the time of the rapture? And the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and then we which are alive will be caught up together with them to always be with the Lord. Three things. Number one, to remove his sanctified bride from the earth. To remove his sanctified bride from the earth. Number two is to receive and take a separated bride to heaven. He wants to receive them and take them to heaven. Number three, to reward the steadfast bride for turning many to righteousness is to remove, is to receive, is to reward the saints of God, the bride of Christ, and is to reward them for turning many unto righteousness. Look at this, number one, to remove his sanctified bride from the earth. Look at Luke chapter 21. In Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 34, Luke chapter 21, verse 34, and take heed to yourselves. What do you call that? Well, that's a command, but that's also a warning. It cautions us. You see, there are people, they don't take any warning, they don't take any caution, and they don't make any preparation. They say, I'm saved, I'm saved. The Lord is coming. Is coming for the church, and whether the church is in the is in the valley or the church is on the mountain, whether the church is in the light or the church is in darkness, whether the church is in false doctrine or the church is in Bible-based doctrine, it doesn't matter. Church is church, and Christ is coming for the church. Christ said, "No." These are the very words of Christ. Christ said, "Take heed to yourselves." lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of this life so that day come so that day come the day will come whether we're ready or not the day will come at the time of the flood only eight people were ready and the day eventually came and the flood came the day will come it says but you are to watch and you are to take care and you are to take heed so that day will not come upon you unawares in verse 35 it says for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth of the whole earth of the whole earth there are some people that say that you know the rapture, when it takes place, it will take place in those major cities that are well known. It will take place everywhere. 
the people who are in the air in the plane when the rapture comes it will affect them those who are on the road in their cars when the rapture comes it will affect them those who are on the sea it will affect them those who are in their homes in their houses it will affect them those who are walking at the mill at the factory it will affect them all over the earth in the village in the town in the city that day will come upon many people and it will take them on earth all those who are dwelling living on the face of the whole earth in every country and then it says in verse 36 here is what it's saying watch it therefore watch it therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass to escape all these things what are those things to escape the great tribulation when a war is going to come out against a particular country the people or the nation that is waging war with that country will evacuate their people the wrath of that country wants to fall on this country and they know that the ambassadors are there their own citizens are there. So what they will do is to evacuate their people, remove their people from that place before the war will come out. The time of the tribulation is the time of wrath, the wrath of God and the wrath of the Lamb. And that wrath of the Lamb is going to fall upon the earth and the Lamb as a bride, the church. He is the Osman, he is the head of the church. He's going to take away, he's going to remove his bride from the earth before that tribulation will take place. That's why it says, Jesus himself said, you watch and you pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That's the rapture. You escape the great tribulation and you stand before the Son of Man and he receives you before the great tribulation and he takes you up on high. We're told in First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, we're looking at it from verse 4. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4. In verse 4, it says, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day were not of the night nor of darkness. In verse 6, it says in verse 6, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. In verse 7, it says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Verse 8, it says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Why? Look at verse 9. In verse 9, For God has not appointed us to wrath, God has not appointed us to the wrath of the great tribulation, to the wrath of the almighty God, to the wrath of the Lamb. God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by the Lord Jesus. We will escape the great tribulation, will go in the rapture, the Lord will remove the sanctified bride from the earth before the great tribulation in Jesus' name. Number two here is to receive and take a separated bride to heaven. The bride that is separated. 
You know, if you are married, especially when you first get married, your bride or your spouse, as such, friends, maybe just normal friends, regular friends, both earthly friends, human friends of the same sex or indifferent of the opposite sex before you got married. Now you are married and the lady is excited about the marriage. This is the best thing that ever happened unto me. And because of that, she separates from all the other familiar friends that they could travel together without taking permission from anybody. And they could get this done together, they could plan together, but now she separates from all that because she's now a bride, a new bride, separated. You see, there are people that do not understand that if you are a child of God and you are part of the bride of Christ, you must separate from the world. If you're still a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. The rapture is not for the enemies of God. Those who are not separated from the world. There are people that do not understand that they need to take their heart away from whoever was holding their heart before. If Satan held your heart before, if occult uh, held your hand, heart before, if the world and society held your heart before, you're getting ready for the rapture, you'll withdraw, you'll take your heart away from the world. If your heart was in finance, your heart was in commerce, your heart was pursuing after the dust and the sand of the world before, and you are immersed in them, entrenched in them, now you know the Lord is coming, you will withdraw, you will win yourself away from all those things that were I tie you down because you are expecting Christ that is coming for the separated bride. You must be separated and set apart unto the Lord. And look at what the Lord is saying is to receive and take the church unto himself. John chapter 14, John chapter 14, reading from verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. All the things that are happening around us, and then some people are so troubled, they cannot come out, they cannot come to church, they cannot come to Bible study. I've decided, I'm not, once it is uh, six o'clock in the evening, I'm not going to come out because you know what is happening. I hear that story, I hear that story. They don't live their lives according to the Bible. They live their lives on the basis of story, story, story. I hear, I hear. They are not hearing from heaven. They are only hearing from the world. Those people are not getting ready. Let not your heart be troubled. The Lord is preparing you for the rapture. The Lord is not preparing you for kidnappers. I didn't hear the amen of my people. The Lord is not preparing you for, you know, difficult people. They're looking for people. He's not preparing you for the adversary. You will be alive and you will be healthy and you'll be protected. You will dwell in, under the shadow of the Almighty. A thousand before this side and ten thousand on that side, it will not come near you. I said it will not come near me. Near me. It will not come near me. No heart trouble. No heart palpitation. We're moving on to the day of rapture. I'll be there. I'm asking you, I'll be there. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, verse 2. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. Tell me now, 
Do you really believe, I'm talking to you now, you as an individual, do you really believe Christ has gone to prepare a place for you? Somebody is building a house for you. And that person building that house for you is thinking about you every moment. He puts this, puts that, puts that. And he happens to be a good doctor as well. And then you are sick and is building the house for you. Will he allow you to die before the house is ready? He'll heal you. He'll deliver you. He'll keep you happy. He'll keep you safe. That house is building for you. Nobody else will occupy that house. I go to prepare a place for you. Look at verse 3. It says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. That's the rapture. That's the rapture. I will come again. And what's the next word there? What's the next word there? Receive you unto myself. That's the purpose of the rapture. He removes the bride from the earth. And then he receives the bride unto himself. That where I am, where I am, where I am, there you will be also. Will you be there? I said, will you be there? Are you very sure? Are you sure that Satan will not take you away before that time comes? Are you sure you will not backslide? I will not backslide. Christ is coming. I will be ready. I will be there. You'll be there in Jesus' name. Number one is to remove the sanctified bride from the earth. Number two is to receive and take the separated bride to heaven. Number three is to reward his steadfast bride for turning many unto righteousness. You will work for the Lord. I said you will work for the Lord. And then when the Lord comes, great will be your reward. He will not only reward those who are standing here or sitting here, who are our pastors and ministers, every one of you. I'm talking to somebody there now. I said every one of you. I can't see my people. I say every one of you. Where are you there? Where are you there? You will receive your reward in Jesus' name. In Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, we're looking at verse 3. Daniel chapter 12, and we're reading from verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that be wise, are there wise believers here today? I said, are there wise children of God here today? You are getting ready and you are keeping, you are keeping in the work of the Lord. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars. How long? Forever and ever. Your life will turn others to righteousness. Your language will turn others to righteousness. Your behavior will turn others to righteousness. Your encouragement, your uplifting attitude will turn others to righteousness. Your evangelism will turn others to righteousness. Your doing good, giving to people will turn others to righteousness. And everything you do, everything you say, will have the purpose of turning others unto righteousness. And I pray you will not be weary. 
I pray you will not be tired. I pray you will not backslide. I pray you will not be discouraged. Day by day, you will keep on doing good and your life will be bringing people into the kingdom of God and I will see you in heaven. You will see me in heaven. I'll see a crown on your head and I will see many stars in your crown because your reward will not fade and will not fail in Jesus' name. Amen. Where are you? Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I thank you. I'm not preparing for the great tribulation. You are preparing me for the rapture. You are preparing me for the coming of my Savior and the coming of my bridegroom. I need grace. I need strength. I need your spirit. Everything I need to make me ready. Give to me today, and then when I leave the service today, I will not leave the message on the seat and where I'll be sitting. I'll take the message with me, and I will live the way you want me to live, ready for the coming of my Lord.